Turn your microphone, yes, thank you. Namaste, Rishaji. Say namaste. So happy to see you again and uh, no questions anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I had such a big complicated question before satsang. No more. <laughs> I just, <laughs> yes. I just want to say for all of us, I, I'm sure that feeling so blessed, you know, to be in your presence again and uh, hearing the truth again. It's to me, it feels like coming to senses, you know, after. Yes. Uh, yeah. So thank you so much. Yes, yes, yes. And of course, I wish you easy and fast recovery and uh, yes. We are all. Yeah, I'm surprised at how easy it has been actually, but it's not fast. It's going to take some time. So, mm -hmm. yeah, but slowly, slowly. Sounds it's just the dance of the body, you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think many people know that I've had this, um, this body has been a great teacher for me throughout my entire life. And, um, often through these kinds of experiences. So this is not something new to me. This is something that's quite familiar actually. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but nonetheless, it's, um, yeah, it's always a nice uh, a reminder. It's an always, always a good opportunity to um, feel the love of people, of the Sangha, mm and to touch base very deeply in some way with Bhagwan Ramana's teaching that we are not the body. Mm -hmm. And um, and also with the Buddhist teaching, which says that the suffering in relationship to the body uh, is the, the degree of suffering is proportionate to what we do in the mind with what the body is doing. And so this is always, yeah, having a major mm, surgery like this is what you have this opportunity once again, you can say, to, uh, and I don't recommend it for everyone. <laughs> but when it's there, um, it, it is an opportunity to understand once again that there is something that we can't put our finger on, something that we can't name, that even through these difficult moments remains untouched and is shining. And that this self-radiance is what is shining through the eyes of all beings and um yeah so and i'm always i feel always greatly um i feel great gratitude um many of you know i've been in this past 14 months, I think this is the third surgery. So the third, the third time I've been in hospital. And um, <clears throat> it's just astounding. Those of you who are in, in this field of medical, one way or another, of looking after others, it's truly amazing to be aware and present in a room full of people who are shining in their professionalism, in their love, in their compassion, and in their caring for people they don't even know. And um, this is always the case. And um, yeah, it's quite beautiful actually to have that experience and to remember the, the goodness and the heart of many, many, many people in this world whether people are sitting in support um, of 
peace and quiet, or they're actively doing everything they can for people they barely know to ease their pain and keep them present in the body. So, yeah, there's always plenty to see <laughs> and to realize and to remember. But mostly it's about love to recognize that there's a great love and a great grace in this world that is before all else. And if you can see that in a moment like this, then you realize how fortunate this life is to have this life and to have these opportunities to know yourself beyond the body. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. It is such a precious example. Like when you, I mean, sometimes it seems like you are struggling, like about myself. Yeah, I'm struggling mm -hmm. the, through the hardest uh, life ever or, you know, experience like, <laughs> you know, but when you think of something like, you are sharing now <laughs> like it's nothing it's just another experience you are going through and yeah 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 it is another experience you're going through but you know the thing that always shines through these things for me is there's just no you cannot go through these experiences alone this feeling of separation that we have like i'm in this alone when you are in this kind of a situation where it's a medical emergency, you know right away you are not in this alone. <laughs> There's nothing you can do about it. You are absolutely lying. You are laying in the arms of God's grace. And, you know, everyone who comes to you uh, is there to help and is there to remind you that There is so much more to this experience of living than just what my small mind thinks is going on. Mm -hmm. you know, but you have to be available to see it. And this is why it's so important to become stable in this ability to witness and observe mm -hmm. what is going on around you and then not take it personally. If you can do that, you begin to see what's shining through this. And what is, what is the foundation of this whole experience of, that we call life? But in order to do that, you have to be willing to let go of all of the stories of me. You have to let go of, the, of your attachment to the way that you think things should be or they ought to be. You have to let go of the thought that you are special and you shouldn't have to go through this, whatever this is whether it's a relationship or it's a loss in the family or it's a physical illness in the body. Um, this idea that somehow I don't deserve this, this is a great support for suffering. Mm -hmm. And so it becomes really, really important to accept what is, as the nature of things, even when we don't understand it, even if we can say, oh, it's some karma working itself out, that's fine. We can understand that intellectually, can't we? Mm -hmm. But when we really understand it, we simply let go into the experience and say, okay, fine. Okay. I don't know what the purpose of this is. I don't know what the cause of it is. I don't know what the solution is. So I surrender to life. Have me, take me. Show me what it is that I need to know and I need to understand now. And invariably, it's that we need to learn to love more, either ourselves or, the, or another or the world. It's always about loving more. I love this story in the Buddhist tradition of Kuan Yin. Some of you know Kuan Yin in, in um, Buddhism, Zen Buddhism, 
Avalokiteshvara yeah, in um, Tibetan. This is the Bodhisattva of compassion and the way that Kuan Yin in, in the specific Zen tradition, the way that she came to realize the truth, the way that she awakened, that she became the enlightened saint, Kuan Yin, was she opened her heart and her, first she opened her ears and then she opened her heart to the suffering in the world, to the sounds of suffering in the world. And it was through the full acceptance of the whole mm, catastrophe, you could say, of living that human beings go through. It was through this recognition that this bodhisattva awakened. And so this tells us not that we are suffering because we deserve it or because we have done something wrong, but rather that the suffering that is here if we can see through it, if we can ask ourselves, what is the purpose of this? And come to understand that the purpose of all experience is that we learn to love more. We learn to open the heart more. We learn to surrender the stories of me and mine. This idea that I deserve only something good. I don't deserve pain, I don't deserve the difficulty I'm experiencing now. When all of this is let go of and we actually hear the presence of life itself in its fullest dimension, then we are able to see in some way directly the shining. Of being. And we come to know that this shining is not in someone else, that this shining, this self-radiance is here. It's beginning here in the heart. And then in the midst of the most difficult circumstances, we are able to be a blessing to everyone around us. So. Thank you so much. <laughs> I hope we've answered your question that you forgot. Yes. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. Hello? Yes, hello, Alberto. I'm not able to hear you. Can you come closer to the microphone? I can tell that you're trying to speak, but I can't really hear you. Because I'm, I'm the country. Uh, many, uh, very, co uh, very good coverage. But, uh, and I, I don't have very, uh, I have a low battery. So I, lo I want to say that I'm very happy to see you again. And uh, and for me, it's a present from Bhagavan or from, or from the grace uh, to let me stay here now, listen, lis listening to you with the Sangha, with this precious Sangha. And for me, it's the best present that I can have. And <laughs> to see you, uh, to listen to you again many, many times, because I have a lot of things to learn from you and from all the Sangha. So thank you. Thank you to Bhagavan. And a big huge for you and for all the Sangha. Thank you. Namaskaram. Yeah. Om Namo Bhagavate.
Hello, Marie. Turn your microphone on. Namaste, Rikiji. Namaste. Namaste. So Namaste. good to see you. So good to be in your presence. Gosh, <laughs> such a delight. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Mm, and blessings on your continued journey and recovery. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. So I wanted to ask you um, a little bit of continuation of the subject that you started today. Because a while back, I was um, in the role of a caretaker. And maybe um, um, how to stay centered when there is such a great responsibility for another being's well-being. And, um, you know, the, the, the research and the work and, and uh, being responsible for somebody's life somebody's journey or maybe it's not right to take that responsibility on but um <laughs> but, uh, but i you know i under the pressure and fear yeah. Um, yeah, yeah i felt that i was very um very much distracted by that and uh, so maybe you just got some guidance because it seems like maybe it's easier to surrender my own life, but it's somebody else's life, it feels, it feels heavier. It's well, it's a, yeah, it's a very, yeah, understand that it's a, this, the, this circumstance you're describing is a very entwined kind of circumstance because you say it's, it's easier if it's my life and it's different if it's someone else's life, but my life and someone else's life is actually the same life. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. there's so many things at play when you're in that circumstance. Um, but the thing is that you can notice what comes up for you, the sense of responsibility, which is overwhelming. And, you know, I've known you long enough to know that you are going to be overwhelmed by this sense of responsibility every time because you take things so... Um, your intention is so good and your intention to do no harm is so strong but then this becomes another impediment right because it, 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 it pulls you out of the ability to just be freely present in the moment so one of the things you can do is you can just watch yourself go into that sense because if you talk about a sense of responsibility understand that what's underneath that is a sense of future think right do you know what i mean by future think mm -hmm. yeah. you are you are worried about what will happen you are worried about what could happen you are worried about what if maybe this maybe that this is that intense sense of responsibility but the fact of the matter is that if you really look at the circumstance, all you can really do is what's right here, right now. So the opportunity that you have when you're in that circumstance with someone, once you've done your research and everything, but you're actually in the circumstance of being that caregiver, the most important thing, the most um, useful thing that you can do is to leave everything outside the room and to be there in this moment, fully in this moment. Because, you know, part of what happens for us when we assume great responsibilities for others and for circumstances is that we are, we are actually pushing away the direct perception of what is here now. We are so worried about what might show up here <laughs> in this moment that we actually aren't here in this moment. It's, it's somehow is easier or it somehow is more of a habit for us to be worried about what might come next or might come in the future or what mistake I might make. And all of this kind of future think prevents us from being absolutely 100% here now. And yet this is the moment where we, in this moment of here nowness is where we can experience freedom from this 
intense sense of responsibility. So always when you find yourself in that circumstance, definitely do your homework and do the things that you want, you need to do to make your personality sense or your me sense feel comfortable in that circumstance. But once you're in that circumstance, just be fully there. And then come what may, you know? Yeah. Be present for life in its full embodiment at that moment. Even if that means that you are this, you are there for this great gift of when someone else passes. If you've ever been in the room when someone dies, this is everyone talks about this that has been through this. This is just a great moment of deep, deep reflection and deep, deep um, grace. And for most people, deep, deep gratitude for having been there at that moment for that, for that being. So, as we always know in this way of, of Advaita, in this way of Bhagavan Ramana, there's really only one thing ever to do, and that's to keep letting go. And, and being worried and um, accept taking responsibility for things which are you you can't really take responsibility for right you can't take responsibility for for someone for someone living or dying you know even nurses and doctors and in hospitals and they know this you 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 can't take responsibility you can only do what you can do the responsibility for living and dying belongs to the individual and it belongs to life itself this is not your responsibility. So don't assume it. But help as best you can. You know, it's the smallest things when I reflect on this every time I end up back in the hospital like this. I always reflect that when you're there and you're in that situation, most of what you hear from from people, from outside, from family, from friends, from loved ones, is about the big picture, you know, of, of what why you are there and what's going on with your body and what your prognosis is, you know, these big questions. But the things that are really the most significant is that person who comes up when you can't move <laughs> or you are hooked up to machines or whatever, is that person who comes up and just takes your hand or takes a, a warm cloth and, you know, washes your face. Mm -hmm. So when you find yourself in that caregiving position, understand that it is often the very small things which make the most difference to the being that's there in that, in that circumstance with you. It's not really the bigger picture. It may not even be the question of living or dying. So be wary of your projections in any circumstance. Chances are your projections are not accurate. <laughs> so if you come into the moment, into here, into now, and you have an open heart, and you fill your heart with seva, with, the, with love, with service, then life will guide you in the way that in what needs to happen at that moment. Yeah, I, I, I see that when you're sharing right now. And when I look back, it was, I was so preoccupied with trying to do the right thing that, um, yeah, 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 I, yeah. you know, I was like, um, Afterwards, I thought, you know, where was my, when, you know, I forgot in a way to practice. I neglected to practice through uh, spending more time and be more aware in that pressure every moment because it's it's an opportunity in a way. It's a powerful yes. opportunity to, to to practice when we are. Should we be able to step back just a little and turn the attention to? What is a yes, 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 absolutely. And you're and the, the, the important thing now is that you are reflecting on that experience now. And so if that experience comes to you again, you will be different in it. Mm -hmm. 
because each time we have any experience in life, we we respond according to what we learned from a similar experience before. So your reflection now is what prepares you for the next time you have an experience like that. Mm. Yes, yes, thank you. Mm. Thank you for that encouragement as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, you again, Rashidji, thank you for being here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Who's first in this queue now? Is it Diana? Is it you? Are you next in this queue? Yes, I think maybe it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah, very good. Hello, hello. Uh, Namaste, Rishi, namaste, namaste, all of the Sangha. And I would like to share my total uh, gratitude and feel an overflowing heart of gratitude to uh, have you back. And uh, yeah. you never were away. Uh, you were closer than ever. This is the truth. Closer than ever. And, and uh, this experience... Um, of, of starting with the uh, operation already, you know, all these hours sitting in silence together with the Sangha, it was so powerful for me. I, I it was so powerful uh, because I, I felt that all, all the power comes only from silence, only yeah. from silence and from Ramana and from Avunachala and, and from yeah. yourself and, uh, it was like a four-hour darshan for me here. Yeah, I, I, I'm so. It really made a big shift. I made a the shift of recognizing that trusting to the silence is all. What is all? Trusting yeah. the silence is all. All is found yeah. in the silence, and yeah. uh, and also the 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 procedure of the of uh, the days where we sat together. And so I, I was only grateful. I was looking forward when we are sharing again, because I feel so connected to, uh, to all, you know, to all, not know, I don't know really the Sangha. I know a little bit, um, uh, Ananda, Anandi, I know a little bit, but nobody else really. But uh -huh. it, it was clear who was this, and it was clear that that it was just one one awareness uh, being together with your awareness and all connected. And as you wrote once, in the heart of beingness, one in the heart of beingness. This was yeah. totally, totally uh, anchored. This anchored through all the weeks very deeply, and I'm very grateful. Yeah. I can only say. Oof. Yes, yes. Such beautiful, the power of, of community and the power of oneness, huh? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this is also, I really would like to share, this connects me profoundly with you. Uh, yes. The silence connects me profoundly with you because sitting in the in the silence with you, it is, it is, it is just 100% clear there's nothing than silence. We are this, yeah? This is completely clear. Even if some sometimes, as I wrote, things are so, it, something can blow up uh, as, yeah, as something, but it's nothing. It's, it's really nothing. nothing. Yes, yeah. it's nothing. <laughs> it's yes. nothing. And your notes that came through to Anandi were so beautiful and so expressive of, of your of your truth and your understanding in that moment. And I enjoyed hearing them each time. So I am also very grateful that you thank that you so only, much. Thank not you. only were you silent, but you also spoke mm -hmm. because then <laughs> silence is speaking. You see? Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, may I add to say special thank you to Anandi. I really would say, would love to say special thank you to Anandi yes. who gave everything, you know, for, yes. yeah, thank you, Anandi. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Beautiful. Yes.
Much love. Much love. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Rishi. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wolltest du was sagen, Michael? Wolltest du was sagen? Hm. Bitte, was? Was? Is there more? I think uh, my, my visitor have two <laughs> wonderful guests. Uh, uh, and uh, maybe Michael wants to say something. Hello. Namaste, Rishi. Namaste. Um, I once met you in uh, a Zoom meeting. It was long ago. And I'm very happy to to be here with you again. Um, and I just want to say that I'd, I'm very grateful. And what you said about um, being near to a person who dies, and this uh, that is that it is a very great gift to be there and to just to be with it, with, with a person. This is what I experienced with my mother not so long ago. Mm. And I experienced it really, as you, as you said it, um, as a, it was so uh, touching to see her and to um, be with her, to, uh, to help her to, to go this way. And I, um, I had, I, I'm, I was singing for her the uh, Triambakam mantra, you know, <laughs> and uh, and and spoke the last words to her and helped her to to let go. And this was so so touching and so to to feel okay. She's really she is not the body. The body is leaving. The body is not able to live anymore, any longer. And what is, uh, I was feeling that um, she um, noticed me, uh, what, I'm, what I was saying on, on a different level. Yes, yes. And then going somewhere. And it was um, you know, what you said. Is it was exactly what I am was experiencing with her. Yes. Beautiful, it's a profound experience, isn't it? Yes, really. It's a closeness that's not that often isn't there because of the veiling, the veiling quality of mind. But you know, in that circumstance where someone in, where 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 uh, awareness or consciousness or spirit is getting ready to leave the body, the veil that the mind drops over who the, over who we are in truth, this veil becomes very, very thin. And so then you can really connect with that being in those last moments, yes. Because they are in their purest form just before leaving the body. Yes. yes. And it was so, uh, it was transforming, transforming mm -hmm. um, what I, the, the relationship which I had with my mother was not the best. Uh -huh. In this moment, I felt all is good. All in, with one moment, it is transformed and I can yes. let go. Even Beautiful. I can let go. Yes. Even I could let go. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing this. Thank you. Uh, namaste. I'm Maria. Hello, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, from Herds. Uh, the kind of this is back from her to the great, great, powerful and um, fine, is fine, pure, fine, fine, fine. <laughs> pure, purity, yeah. purity, purity. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. 
very welcome. Happy to know you. Very happy. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Next in the queue. Okay. <laughs> Namaste. Namaste. Namaskar. <laughs> Okay, who is up next? Please come. Maybe it's me. I don't know. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. So go. I hear you. Yes. Yeah, thank you. I don't know if I'm next in the queue, but I, I maybe it's me. Uh, I, uh, seem, I, seems as though you are. Okay. <laughs> uh -huh. um, I have no question, uh, nothing mm. to wait for, but I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Richie. Thank you, the Sangha. All of you, thanks, God. Thank you for this uh, blessed moment that we spent together when we, we were in the hospital. It was really rich and uh, deep in this deep silence and love. And I am so glad. Uh, it seems like I was waiting for you for years and a thousand of years. And I like if I was uh, looking for you in your world, in the whole universe. And I didn't know that I was waiting for for you, for me, for for life. Even if I've met Grace so many times and so many forms, if I met also, also I visit. Uh, hell after even and now just in the, this uh, in this simplicity of life i i i am full of uh, gratitude great grateful i'm grateful yeah that i met you this winter until another day and uh, my friends my french friends claude and cecile who Grace of them, they, they told me about you, and we came came together. And uh, yeah, I am feel more and more that my uh, living heart, very so sweet, so so warm, so mm, so wide, and uh, well, that's a lot of gratitude. And and also, I wanted to say that the. When I was in Chiru, one day you, you talked to a woman who asked a question about her life. She, she was uh, in problem with uh, uh, because she, she had divorce. And you said to her that uh, she don't have to use uh, her children to be unhappy or in culpability. And uh, what they need is a happy mother and uh, the day after, I met this woman in a shop, and it was a very uh, um, moment full of grace. She was singing and dancing with the other woman of this shop, and she felt so happy, and I felt so happy also. And I wanted to share you and everyone the power yeah. of love. <laughs> thank yeah. you. The power of love, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for sharing, yes. This happiness which we are is there. And oftentimes all we need to do is stop paying attention to the stories in the mind. And when we, when we, enter into this moment of silence with our own being and we're no longer afraid, then this happiness which we are, this open heart can, can open further and shine. The open heart is the lack of fear.
Yeah, beautiful. So many of us mm, in this life, we become afraid to shine. We become afraid to feel the self-radiance of our own heart. Life has been challenging or has been difficult in some way or another, and we don't ignore that and we don't deny that. But um, we also come to understand that this is not who we are. And then we are possible, it becomes possible then to ask this question, who am I? If I am not this, if I am not this fear, if I am not this sadness, if I am not this trauma, then who am I? And then the place we always find ourselves is in love or in happiness. When the heart opens, there can't be anything else. So, beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Hi, right, brother. Hello, Didaya. Hello, hello. Hello. I, uh, I remember your words that you would be most happy if you never saw me again. <laughs> I get that? <laughs> but I have to confess that I'm happy to see your form is still around. Uh, thank you, thank you. I'm happy to hear your voice again, too. Okay. Thank you, Rishi. Yes, me too, actually. <laughs> Namaste, uh. Rishi. Can you hear me? Yes, who is this? Uh, it's Selena. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Selena. Hi, Rishi. Um, our camera is not working, so... <laughs> okay. I was just looking for you, but that explains it. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I would like to add to that. Um, I somehow know that um, I don't need you because... <laughs> <laughs> what what I can learn from you is actually what is inside me and still I'm I'm very very thankful to to be here with you again I mean to be here <laughs> but uh, you are in the space of this awareness yes that you are recovering, that your far form is, yes, filled with your awareness. I'm very thankful yeah. for that. <laughs> and um, my question is, It's um, somehow connected to time and personhood and presence. Okay. okay. Um, so <laughs> I was recently um, discovering uh, um a state of 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 being where i felt like <laughs> my body was moving and um uh, it was just like um <laughs> it was happening so i was i was actually observing in such a way that 
I could feel that the body was moving, the mind was working, but not the mind was working, the body was speaking, um, and everything was happening. So it was it was this um, this flow of events were just yeah were just happening in a in a in a very beautiful row of events where even in the communication with other people I didn't slip out of that state I was just um, I was just observing it yes um. And somehow I felt like within that state, time was existing and not existing. So somehow like, I'm, for me now it's difficult to explain because I'm not sure if I feel it. So I'm, I'm, maybe it's my mind talking now, but I'm trying to, to come up with that feeling again to explain that. Um, so it was like, um, I was I was arranging I was kind not me but the part of the <laughs> it's difficult to say that uh, the body was or the mind was arranging things in the future without getting lost in the future um it was it like it was like the future was happening in the now um And it's kind of difficult for me to explain that now because now I'm back um I'm back into identification with with the person, and kind of that's where my question is leading to how i can how I can stay in that state of observation mm. no <laughs> wait wait a second calm down <sighs> so one of the things that i want to point out to you is that you cannot stay this 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 idea that I want to stay, um, you cannot stay in experiences or circumstances that have as their nature coming and going. So one of the roots of suffering is this desire to stay permanently in a state of mind which is coming and going. So I would suggest to you that rather than asking the question, how can I stay or go back into this state of mind which was coming and going and has now gone, rather realize that for some reason you are given this glimpse of, of eternal nowness. And in that moment, however, it was just a glimpse. It showed you something that was real and true in that moment. But if you try to cling to it now, you will lose this moment. Is that clear? <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> what is real is always here, but it's not here in the past or the future. It's here now. 
This is why we say, let what comes come and let what goes go. Because if we don't, we are always trying to project something or grasp at something or cling to something or keep something. And in that effort, we are not here now. So we are, in a way, we can say we are not available for the real, which is here now. Mm -hmm. Now we have, we had a glimpse of the real, but we turned it into something imaginary. And now we are making a great effort to get back mm -hmm. to what we imagined this experience to be. And in the doing of that, we have missed what has been here now. So, one of the great truths that is revealed in Advaita, in the philosophy and the teaching of Advaita, is that if, if it is coming and going, that is not it. So that's not to say you didn't have a glimpse of it. And this is what you're trying to get back to. It's simply to say that, that a glimpse is not the permanent situation. It is not the real. It is a glimpse of the real, but it is not the real in its totality. Therefore, the only solution, the only real option we have is to remain here now, in what is here now until that reality becomes the stable experience. And it can't become the stable experience if you're chasing it because you're chasing an idea, you're chasing a memory. So I just suggest to you that you let what comes come, you enjoy it, you realize the truth of it, and then you let it go if it goes. When you understand the truth of life itself as being consciousness, it won't go anywhere. And then there will just be this recognition, I am that, and I have always been that. I have never been anything else, and everything else was a dream. And I am no longer a dreamer. I am here as being consciousness and bliss. So when you come to this recognition, understand that what has happened is you have killed time. You should be very clear about that. The yeah, time because I get, I get very melodramatic then. <laughs> uh, yeah. yes. Because I, I enjoyed that feeling of presence and then it comes but this identification again. And yes, I get this strong wish to get back. So now I will say, okay, this is... Because I had one moment as well where then I said, okay, who is this? Who is, who is speaking there? And then I, I, I kind of realized it, it was like a, a bunch of voices in my head. I felt like there was energy in my head. And when I dropped that, uh, I, f I felt like, uh, like some boundaries were cut. Like my body was melting with the world. And, um, Yeah, I thought that this one incident where 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 um I was about to move to a place where I thought I could practice this um in a my, where, where that could give me the space to to practice much more and to um reach as a karma state and then um I felt oh my god Sorry. Sorry. Um, 
And while being there, I was very much in the mind, um, trying to control the situation to yeah. such an extent that <laughs> I felt like I was pushing them away. So yeah. there was an identification again. And um, somehow I thought that the day, it was on the evening before already where I, I felt like this is not going to be, um, this is not going to be good because some circumstances were not doing it. And I thought I could use this as a way to, to, to learn. I really felt it that day to learn that this body is only moving and this body is only playing a game and coming and going and I'm aware of this. So now it is also kind of the awareness that is aware of of losing the presence again and that this is now the stage within this body is in and yeah and then again so, I'm loose. so you are still no you are still your you your attention is still focused on what is coming and going so you you love telling these stories you love having these descriptions you love chasing after these experiences but you are not yeah, asking yourself past, yeah. but you're not asking yourself what does not change or what does not move or what is real this this is this is what you will need to do at some point you you, will, you can chase these experiences you can chase these mm, uh these these mental states um for lifetimes if you want to it, it, it's your life. You can do what you like with it. But I promise you that until you ask the question, what is real? What does not change? What does not move? You will continually be trapped by these experiences. No matter how pleasant they are, you will come to the understanding that, that because you lose the experience, you suffer. And that the experience is generated in the mind and by the mind. Because they're in the past. The, so if I focus on the experience, I'm stuck in the past and I lose the I lose the now. Correct. Yes. So you see, the only place you ever are is now. The only time there ever really is is now. Everything else is a construct of the mind. So this is a mm, important recognition to have but you cannot just have it because i tell you about it you have to be willing you have to be willing to ask what is real and you have to be willing to admit this is not real and the reason i know this is not real is because it's coming and going if it's coming and going this is not it so what is real if this is not it what is real There really are only two choices. You either get to follow the mind or you get to follow what's real. Yeah, the choice is you. <laughs> yeah. I need to and know it's real. It's, he it's here now. Hmm? I need to learn because when when i listen to you while i listen to you i feel your words and immediately when you stop my mind kicks in <laughs> and says but what about this uh like yeah. uh, so yeah, kind of a justification for itself well that's fine but just stop believing it the mind let the mind do whatever the mind does you you get caught because you believe that what you believe what the mind is saying to you what if you just stopped believing it 
I, I'm not telling you to stop the mind. I'm telling you to stop believing it. Stop acting as though what the mind is saying to you is real. <laughs> Yeah, true. Then it and, has power. Yeah. And ask and ask the question. If you say, "Oh, I know this is not real," then you can ask the question, "What is real?" It's it's a it's a it's the same form of inquiry that we have when we say, "Oh, I am not the body." Oh, if I am not the body, then who am I? That's the form of inquiry. This is another form of inquiry. Oh, this is not real. If this is not real, then what is the real? Show me the real. So both of those examples require, they require that you have enough presence of mind to not believe what isn't real or what isn't true. And that you are willing to challenge those beliefs this is not a quick process for most people. This takes time. That's why we call it practice. So I would just encourage you to keep practicing and keep asking the question, what is real? Or show me what is real. I'm not interested in all of these stories anymore. Show me what is real. Now, if you do that, some experiences that you'd like you've been having, these um, subtle experiences, these psychic kind of experiences, they can still keep coming and going because that's obviously a tendency within you. So they can still keep coming and going. The challenge for you is going to be to allow them to come and allow them to go while still asking the question or with the realization, this is not real, so show me the real. What is real? Because the experiences have some momentum to them. You have these experiences frequently. So there is some momentum to this uh, samskara, to this tendency. So that is fine. Just understand if it comes and then it goes, then you can ask the question, what is it real? What is it coming and going in? This is the same question as who am I? All right, my friends, I'm gonna I'm gonna close this for now. I've been sitting in this chair as long as I possibly can. I need to stand up for a while. So I am grateful to have this time with you all and to see you all again. And I'm so grateful for your love and your support and Or the blessing that you all are in my life. <laughs> Please take care and um, I look forward to seeing you the next time. May you be well may you be happy <laughs> may you know the peaceful nature of your heart hari om tatsat